Let's talk a little bit about Intel's decision to exit the DRAM business and going into microchips. Many have said that this microprocessors. is microprocessors. Sorry. Many, yeah. many have said that this is a good example of a large company overcoming what's been called the innovator's dilemma. Can you tell us a little bit about that story, what was going on at Intel and what you learned that others can benefit from? Uh, innovator's dilemma is a bad way to look at it. Uh, it is a better example of a, what Bergman calls autonomous strategy growing up to become a viable alternative to the existing strategy and by management embracing an autonomous strategy it becomes an induced strategy, a top-down strategy of the corporation and allows you to shift from a unproductive in our case pretty dangerously ill mainstream strategy to a new mainstream strategy which is possible because we had cultivated not for that reason but for a variety of different reasons but we did cultivate an alternative um, there are two things that were good and one thing that's bad uh, in that example good is that we had cultivated microprocessors spontaneously, more or less. It's not because we realize microprocessors are going to be that important. But we allowed them to develop, gather up expertise, became enough of a business that it gave us a choice to, to jump from what we were doing to what we might be doing. That was good. Second thing that's good is management realized that we had a sick business, realized that we had an alternative, and took a deep breath and had a capability of making a pretty mo mo monumental decision, which was not more monumental at the time, than in, uh, much more monumental at the time than in, uh, even in the best meaning history, because Intel was a memory company. We thought of us as a memory company, so uh, for Coke to Coca-Cola to abandon soft drinks is kind of conceptually hard for us to ab abandon memories. Was so, so we had what Robert calls strategic recognition and the willingness to act on it. Uh, what is bad about it is that we that spontaneous development did not <laughs> I wish we were more uh, conscious about why microprocessors could be important as time goes on and what it meant and I wish our management was more me Craig Barrett, who succeeded you uh, at Intel, um, coined the phrase the creosote conundrum mm -hmm. that I've heard you refer to before. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what that meant for Intel? Well, Craig is from Arizona, and uh, the creosote bush is a uh, desert plant that drips uh, some poisonous resin on things in its neighborhood. Drip, 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 and the, no plant can die under the poisonous stuff. So the creosote bush has all the water flowing through it. And Craig uh, was uh, trying to establish, break the uh, established habit of microprocessors get all the money and nothing else gets all the money. Microprocessors get all the management attention and nothing else gets all the uh, management attention. And He spent a lot of effort in getting us into a, the 
different kind of business. And try to establish another career as well, Bush, and it, it, it didn't work. Uh, Intel today is as microprocessor focused as it ever was, and uh, I wonder. I wonder about two things. First of all, can you, if you have a Creosote Bush mentality, because it is because you have a wonderful business that can use the, the added investment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can you deliberately establish an alternative Creosote Bush, an alternative opportunity? In Bergman's sense, can you? generate a new business with an induced strategy. I have a feeling it doesn't work. I can't think of anyone who has done that. We have not succeeded in doing it. Uh, what you need to do is cultivate lots of little bushes and see which of them emerges naturally into a creosote bush by dripping toxic resin on the stuff around the, it, and that th then the survivor becomes like a microprocessor business that you can move on to. Uh, and uh, I have a vague, nagging doubt whether the creosote bush is really a good analogy to what was happening there anyway. When you use the creosote bush analogy, you implicitly assume that the stuff is coming out of the ground and you drop toxics and kill them. What if stuff wasn't coming out of the ground? Earlier discussion, innovation. What if all the innovation that you are capable of doing, that you are competent in doing, was in microprocessors and related things? And we weren't inventive enough to poke little plants of relevant content and sufficient quantities. I can argue it both ways, but uh, when this discussion took place, we automatically bought the model that this implied that that's how we uh, kept other business from developing. I'm not so sure. It goes back to, did Intel have a good enough innovation culture, whatever that means? Did we have enough strategic recognition built into management? Did I learn what this, this fellow Steve told me to do in microprocessor? Did I do it in other areas? I, uh, too many unproven and unsubstantiated assumptions at work here. But for what it's worth, that's what the Creosote Bush was supposed to be. Uh, I just want to register that I, I'm not sure in retrospect mm -hmm. that that is what the problem was. Mm -hmm.